Shabbat of the Most High here at the Multitude of Christ Ministry. My name is Ra'a. This is my reader, Brother Marco All. We greet you in the name of Elion, El Shaddai. And today, sisters and brothers, we are going to go into part two, when Jesus was born. So, you know, here at the Multitude of Christ Ministry, we seek to teach all nations and people how to find true salvation according to Holy Scriptures history and the lost books. It is not our intent to trigger you or to make you feel a certain way. It is to convict you, to study, to show yourself approved. Con? Con. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and open up and we're going to get right to the Bible study lesson. There will not be an opening song today. We're going to get right to the Bible study lesson. Allah El? Allah El. All praise. Go ahead, brother. Praise ye El. Praise ye El. Praise ye El. Elion. Praise ye El. Praise El in his sanctuary. Praise El in his sanctuary. Praise El in the firmament of his power. Praise El in the firmament of his power. Praise El for his mighty act. Praise El for his mighty act. Praise El according to his excellent greatness. Praise El according to his excellent greatness. Praise El with the sound of the trumpet. Praise El with the sound of the trumpet. Praise El with the psaltery and harp. Praise El with the psaltery and harp. Praise El with the timbrel and dance. Praise El with the timbrel and dance. Praise El with the string instruments and organ. Praise El with the string instruments and organ. Praise El upon the loud. Praise Elf on the loud symbol. Praise Elf on the high sounding symbol. Praise Elf on the high sounding symbol. Let everything that hath breath. Let everything that hath breath. Praise Elf. Praise Elf. Praise ye Elf. Praise ye Elf. Good greeting, brother. Sisters and brothers, you may be seated. We're going to get straight into our Bible study lesson today entitled When Jesus Christ Was Born. I want to start this Bible study lesson with a dream that I had. Now, before I tell you this dream, I ain't trying to be a prophet or, or Joe Osteen or nothing like that. I just want to explain to you in the best way that I can my dream as we head into part two. So this week, I had a dream that was so vivid some dreams you have them and you wake up and you totally forget. Mm -hmm. Well, in this dream, me and my wife and family just showed up in this church. Don't know why we was in this church, but we was in this church and all the seats was empty. We were waiting for the people to show up. We were waiting for the pastor to come. And the woman... There was a woman that came up to give an announcement and she made the announcement that the pastor would not be here. So I'm sitting here with my family and we're like, huh? And so she says the pastor will not be here. And so the few people that were there besides us, some got up and walked out and this place was already empty. So I get up and say, is there any reason particularly that we need to know about why the pastor isn't here and why there's no congregants, right? And so she started to explain what was going on. You know, sometimes in a dream, it's kind of like, wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. so it, it was like it really didn't matter, right? And so I had just earlier that day watched a whole bunch of videos on Jamal Bryan and I was watching Dawson's uh, TV and, you know, he's exposing all these pastors. So it was no surprise on why, uh, why I was having a dream, right? So during the dream, I, I, I began to say, I stood up and I said, well, heck, I can, I can teach, right? So I, I can teach the class. And so immediately as I say I can teach the class, you know, you start going from stage five to stage one, you start waking up like when things are starting to get real rocky, right? So I get up, I say, I can teach. And as I'm waking up, it starts to be like, well, I'm talking to the lady, next thing you know, in front of the board. Hey, give me 30 days. I can Surely I can teach the doctrine, you know, Christianity, Christology, with superstition. I can teach the dogma of the Catholic Church. Shouldn't be any problem, right? Just give me 30 days. I'm sure all the people will come back and sit down because I'll be teaching people what they are wanting to hear. You know what I'm saying? I'm not coming in. I'm not 
messing with little children, or not committing adultery, or not stealing money, like all the issues that would make the church people leave, it ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with me. So, you know, I'm gonna come in, I can teach y'all what y'all wanna hear, fill it back up, y'all can be hired, you know, interviewing people until then, but, you know, no church should be empty like this, right? So I wake up and I'm like, what in the world is that? What in the world was that? Why would, why would a Christian church, why would this scenario be in my dream, right? And so I'm going back through all the lessons, and I'm like, man, you are coming at Christianity pretty hard, right? And so I started to think, why would I even suggest to teach in that church, right? Even though I know I could teach the dogma that or the doctrine that they love, why would, why would I go backwards, right? right? So a couple of things came to my mind. I was like, I could go back and teach what's easy. Easy is easy. Where, where are our places go out? You can hit refresh if the video disappears, right? Oh, we're still there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just hit refresh if the video leaves. Yep. We got a new technician. Hey, if you're on Facebook, go to YouTube. It might be a, a more fluid stream. You know, we always have issues with Facebook until we're like an hour in. And then, uh, you know what? Unplug the USB that's closer to you. Unplug it and plug it back. One moment, say. Bear with me, bear with me. A lot. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll pray. You know, in the beginning, it, it get rocky on Facebook. You know, we might have to get a new streaming, streaming source. But so when I woke up, I was like, okay, is this dream trying to tell me to go back and teach easy, easier lessons? And there will be more followers for the MOC? Or is it warning me that what I'm teaching, stop teaching it because that's why it's not a lot of people following me? Or is it saying, I, we should just take our ministry, that we should just go back to the Christian church and doc doctrine because they need good teachers like us? Like, stop searching for the truth, right? Stop pushing to find the truth and just settle where we were at, right? Because I was sitting here, man, you gotta understand, my thoughts was going crazy, right? Because I'm like, I used to be at a mega church that was sanctioned and ordained by Joel Osteen's daddy, had 5,000 members, 10,000 worldwide. Then I came to the Hebrew Christian church that had 200 members locally and thousands, you know, uh, across the U.S. Then I got into the MOC ministry, and then at the most, we had, what, 20-something, 30 followers. Now we could be down to three, four families. I could be by myself. So... The Christian church needs teachers. I'm searching for the truth, and a lot of people are getting triggered. We got people on here commenting from Christianity, from Islam. Everybody is triggered in their doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I was like, hey, I can make a real living if I just teach easy lessons, go back and get certified and ordained through Christianity, right? They got all the money. They're giving away free money, $100,000, million dollars, build mm -hmm. your church, build your daycare. Just teach our doctrine. 
but their churches is already empty. Mm -hmm. How how can me how can the things that we know now fit an empty church? The people are already in the church. Huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just four things that came to my mind. I was just like, surely, surely it ain't it. I know we could. Huh? I know we could easily the things that we know go back into Christendom. And be very powerful. Mm -hmm. We grew up in it. We know it. You know what I mean? It's very familiar to our lifestyle. I'm like, is that what the saints want? I, what we want you to do? Stop teaching new stuff. Stop searching for the truth. Stop teaching us stuff that triggers us. Just go back to teaching us what we can hear every day. Go back and teach us stuff that keeps us comfortable. You know what I mean? It was just the craziest dream. I just woke up in the sweat like, man, what is this, right? What kind of dream is this, right? So let's go to Ecclesiastes 5 and 3. So I'm trying to make sense of it, man, with everything that's going on, right? So I, I'm just going to go into scriptures, and this is going to help us as we go forward in this lesson, and every lesson we're going to have throughout the year. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3, when you get it, right, go ahead. For a dream coming through the multitude of business, uh -huh. and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. A dream coming by a multitude of business. Now, I already know, like, that right there did not help me. It didn't make any sense to me. So I had to go look at it in some alternative uh, uh, Bible versions, right? So when I went and looked at it in the New International Version, the New Living Translation, and the Good News Translation, they read like this. I read the first parts of that. Go ahead. The dream comes when there are many cares. There are many cares that have put many gray hairs <coughs> on my face over the last five years. True, huh? <laughs> Even you are, you didn't have no gray hair, but you might have been Beijing, you know, whatever, but they was coming, right? We got a, many cares, a lot of worries on your mind. Listen, them gray hairs come. Just hit refresh, I can follow those steps, right? So YouTube is going to be a steadier stream than Facebook. Just come watch us on YouTube. We're going to keep going. What does it say in the New Living Translation? Too much activity. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Gives you restless dreams. What does it say in the Good News Translation? The more you worry, the more likely you are to have bad dreams. Y'all, some of y'all heard that story, y'all. Like, what's bad about that dream? It's bad to me because I am not a compromising person. Right. My personality doesn't get along with a lot of people that would compromise. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't get along. They, they feel it. They're like, that's not the kind of person I want to be on because as a matter of fact, it's this or that, and he ain't going to give me no leeway to be sleazy. So you imagine that kind of personality in me, especially in my aunt, then we not going to teach that way. Right. You don't hear us teaching that way in scripture, right? Mm -hmm. So if the church is empty, we, I'm saying I can, teach, I can fill the church up, but I'm going to fill the church up with truth. Mm -hmm. right. I, can't go right. back, I can't go back to the sleepy doctrine that had the people leave in the first place, That's right? right. And, and how long what, did the pastor's transgression go on before the people left? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all want the church full, but y'all want to fill the church back up teaching the same old slave doctrine that our parents and grandparents for generations have grown up on. Mm -hmm. I just can't go back to that, sister and brother. You sisters and brothers who follow me that are questioning anything that we are teaching, I just can't go back to where you're comfortable. You're just going to have to pick up the pace and figure out where it is we are at right now. That's right. I can't go backwards, and I guarantee you I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. I'm just going to tell you, a matter of fact, what it is and, and see how long it takes you, like it took me, to catch up to what it is I just heard, right? That's You're going to have to worry yourself. You're going to have some dreams. You're going to be glitching for a little bit, right? How, how, how... The crazy thing is how we complain and say Christianity was all this and that, right? It was all these things wrong with the doctrine, with the preachers and the teachers, just to come over here and say I'm an Israelite and still try to bring Christianity with you. Right. So I'm saying a lot 
without saying nothing, but what I am saying is, you can't say you're a child of the Most High and you're still trying to bring doctrine with you from where you came from. Did that make sense? Let's keep going. So let's look at this, right? So a couple things came to my mind, right? What you hear a lot about being taught or spoken about against it is spirituality, religion, and doctrine. Don't care what teacher, what church, what prophet. You go online, you go to TBN, you go to the Word Network, wherever you're going, some, somebody is talking to you about spirituality, religion, and doctrine. Right. right? So let's get some understanding of what spirituality is. Like, what is spirituality? Spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling or sense or belief that there is something greater than myself. Feeling, sense, or belief. Go ahead. Something more to being human than sensory experience. And that the greater whole of which we are part is cosmic or divine in nature. Do you have to be in a religion to be spiritual? No. You do not have to be in a religion to be spiritual. Because it's something within, it's a feeling, it's a sense of belief in a divine and a higher power, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, so we're, nobody... And no religion and denomination, nobody in this world is arguing about spirituality. Everybody that believes in a higher being has spirituality. Do we agree? Yes. Come. So now, here is the two places where we're starting to see a separation, and this is where the confusion is. Religion. What is that, Up. Belief in worship of. Or obedience to a supernatural power. Stop. Or a belief Belief, worship, and obedience to a supernatural power. This is where even in Christendom, even in Islam, Bahaism, Judaism, and Catholic, everywhere, the, 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 the difference and the divide between people is not spirituality, it's religion. The belief, worship, and obedience of a supernatural power. What supernatural power? Because I'm going to argue and say, Ahayim, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, these are different powers because the doctrine behind their names is different. Mm -hmm. That's right. Boy, I stepped ahead of myself, right? So, so the way Birth of a Nation set worship and the way GOCC and the way IUIC and IOG and all these bigger names, the way they all worship mm -hmm. and the way they all have obedience and belief in the doctrine of their supernatural power is what's dividing the people. You can't unite when the reason these religions is established is the doctrine. The doctrine comes with the name. That's what's separating us. Go ahead, Al. Uh, uh, considered to be divine or to have control of human destiny. Everybody. Is it Da that has divine destiny or is it Jesus? Is it El or is it uh, uh, Ra? Uh, 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 is it Ra? Or is it Shamash? Or is it Indian? Who? What's the power? Go ahead. Any formal or institutionalized expression of such belief. Okay, so it is religion is when you organize spirituality. Mm -hmm. I think what they're trying to do is form one religion that unifies all spirituality. Is that not what they're trying to do? That's, that's, that's the problem. That's what you had going on in the entire battle. You had a, a central a people speaking the same language, trying to unify under a deity, under, under one worship, right? So here's the issue we're having today. Billions of people are spiritual, but billions of people are, are, are in religions that are at odds with each other. And here's where it even gets more of a divide. Dogma or doctrine. What is doctrine? The written body of teachings of a religious group that are generally accepted by that group. So doctrine is written teachings about their religion and about their divine power that the group agrees with. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something. How come we're all saying we're Israelites, which makes the group, but the doctrine and the religion are separate. Mm -hmm. One would say the spirituality is not different, but when you create a different name mm -hmm. and a different religion, 
or doctrine of a religion, mm -hmm. now you have separation. That's right. So you can have a whole One West organization with all these teachers, and they come out of One West, and now they're all teaching different doctrine. Mm -hmm. They were unified in one thing. But now that they separated from that group, now their doctrine separates everyone. Mm -hmm. So spirituality, they're all saying, when you call them Christ, Ahia, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahusha, all these different things, now the doctrine, the written thing that people worship, right? The written thing that people believe, the written thing that people have obedience to is what separates all mankind. You're going to have an issue with what's being taught and what was written. And the way you perceive it and the way you've been taught is contrary to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to disagree that we have spirituality and we believe in a higher power, the, the, the divine power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Islam, Muslims aren't going to disagree. Mm -hmm. The Jew, Jewish aren't going to disagree. The Catholics aren't going to disagree. The Christians aren't going to disagree in the spirituality that there's a divine power above Abraham. Mm -hmm. The difference is going to come in the religion and the doctrine of that deity. Yes. That's the craftiness of a deceiver that has people divided. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That is what is separating the people. I don't forget to hit the button up and, and put them side by side. Con on the slide. Hit the button to cut it on. To the left, the slide. No, no, you see where we're at on the left? The, the video below it is the PowerPoint. Hit the button to the top right. Now make it side by side. So it's on, it just ain't coming on the picture. Anybody watching from there? Right. So we we're, we're right. So spirituality, religion, and doctrine. It's not spirituality that divides the people. It's religion. And doctrine. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 14. Ephesians chapter 4 and 14. So I'm trying to make sense of this dream and how I, it can help with this lesson, right? And everybody is spiritual. But it seems like people are wanting to find the perfect religion and denomination of church that teaches the doctrine that makes them feel comfortable, right? Because mm -hmm. if they're teaching a doctrine that doesn't make them feel comfortable, they don't want to be there no more. Nope. Read Ephesians 4 and 14. That we give forth be no more children. Uh -huh. Sauce, to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Every wind of what? Doctrine. He calls, them, calls you little children when you always try to compare this church with that church, that camp with that camp, that leader with that leader, that teaching with that teaching, instead of gleaning from the teachers to make yourself a better priest and teacher and watchman for your family, instead, you would rather put teacher against teacher, congregation against congregation, religion against religion, when it should be for your benefit, your growth, right? But we know all people aren't righteous people. And some people got some wicked ways about them that they have to discern and they have to clean up for themselves and repent from it. But you're not supposed to be watching a lesson to put it and, pull, and, 
and put it against someone, right? So if you watch a lesson and this guy is teaching full moon, this guy is teaching sun moon, and this guy is teaching uh, dark moon, then you got to look at the one that has the scriptures and the actual tangible proof to back up what's going on in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. right? You have to look at the sources that are being provided because the doctrine has to match up what is really going on, right? Because we know that there are very charismatic people out there that can make something totally wrong sound right. That's right. So you have to, just in that simple example, you have to discern for yourself what is written and what is said to be true. You don't read nowhere where it says the new moon is the full moon or the conjunction moon is the dark moon, mm -hmm. but you can clearly read where it tells you the first slither of the sign of light on the moon is the first day. That's right. So if you're going to believe what you read, you have to read so you can find what it is you believe, lest you be tossed to and fro like little children carried away by every doctrine. Go ahead. By the slate of men. By who? The slate of men. So I blame everything on the most high. Well, it's the most high I will. I was ignorant. Most high will, I didn't know. Well, he put the thing before you, but how you discern the information is the problem. It's, it's who's teaching you and who's supposed to be helping you understand the thing is the problem. Either not having somebody with wisdom to help you, or that person that is saying they're wise, wise is not wise at all, and not giving you any understanding. Go ahead. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There's people out there lying and waiting, and they are running the churches today. That's why the churches are empty. It ain't my fault that you don't like what it is that I'm teaching in this series, or the last series, or the series before that. Well, what is it you're trying to say? You're trying to say Jesus didn't exist? I'm not saying nothing. You got a brain to understand. You got a left and a right brain. Mm -hmm. Use it. That's, right. That's the kind of teacher I am. I'm teaching you to be a leader. I'm not teaching you to follow me. Right. You write me to buy what you're hearing. That's right. And you pray to your Elohim and you pray to your most high and get some understanding. That's right. Well, what are you saying about Christianity? I'm saying put it down, put it all down. You can't keep what you like about it. It don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to persuade or confuse any of you. What I ask of you is to listen to the information, pray and meditate on what you hear, and then ask the most high for understanding. That's right. That's that's all I ever ask, is it not? I'm not, I'm not here trying to persuade. I'm not trying to get you uh, sympathy to give money and give donations. Listen. If the church is empty and you're not following me, then you're not following the motive of Christ. Mm -hmm. You're not hurting me. I'm trying to lead you to salvation. That's right. I don't want you to walk, follow me and worship me in the sense that has the churches in, in the world empty today. Mm -hmm. Men will fail you every time, but the most high will not fail you. Yeah. That's right. Listen to what I'm saying. Pray about it. Meditate on it. Ask the most high for understanding. I'm just clearly reading to you scripture out of the box that has been given to you throughout millennia. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's keep moving. So that concludes. Okay, one more scripture. One more scripture. Let's go to Ezekiel 3. I think this is the end of the intro right here. Ezekiel chapter 3. This is what I'm going to tell you that you're not going to hear from most leaders. If I stand before you and teach, the first thing I, 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 I knew when I came and said, oh, man, okay, I'm going to try to teach, try to do better than my dad. I'm going to try to get into the Word. Back in 2009, I actually got an opportunity to actually teach in front of a church and actually got paid and was taking the dinner just like they used to do my dad. This church is still do that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is what you got to understand when you want, think you want to stand and, and be on a, a Christian panel or you want to you stand in front of a church or you want to speak in front of people on the corner. This is what you got to understand about the scripture. This is the basic knowledge. Go ahead. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Go ahead. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, Hear the word at my mouth uh -huh. and give them warning from me. Give who warning? Give you warning from the Most High. Go ahead. 
When I say unto the wicked. When you say unto who? The wicked. Those that aren't following the law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. Thou shalt surely die. See, you, you, you sister brothers that still try to hang on to Christianity, that Yeshua, Yeshia, uh, uh, somebody actually died for, for, for the remission of your sins so that you don't have to answer for sin. You are fooled and deceived by the devil. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to come to understand. You're going to have to answer for your sins. That's the basic knowledge of it. Ain't nobody going to come and atone and take away you continuing to be sinful, even in the church. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And thou givest him not warning, uh -huh. nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. You know what wicked people do? They go to churches that don't warn them. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about money. Talk to me about prosperity. Talk, don't talk to me about nothing. Tell me a whole bunch of stories that don't really relate to nothing. Read me one speak scripture and just talk to me. Have a music concert for an hour, teach for 30 minutes, and let me go home. You want to go places where people don't warn you and teach you something that you need to open your eyes to. Go ahead. To save his life. To save his life. To save your life. To save my life. I'm warning me to save me. So if I'm going to warn me, I'm definitely going to warn you. You're not special. I'm not special. Go ahead. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Listen, a wicked person is going to die in their iniquity. Whether you warn them or not warn them, a wicked person is going to die. Here is the catch when you want to take on the role as if you want to teach and be responsible for people outside of yourself and outside of your family. Here go the warning to everybody that's trying to speak and teach everybody but not be responsible for them. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thine hand. See, your blood is going to be on me if I teach not truth, the words that seek truth. If I'm not see, uh, speak, seeking acceptable words to teach you, then your blood is going to be on me because you can't find true salvation without the truth. If nobody can paint the picture to you for you to help you change yourself, Actually, tangibly, you can use the word to help yourself, then the word is of no good. A teacher that gets up and teaches you smooth things that doesn't convict you to get you to stop being wicked is a useless teacher. Go ahead, verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked. Now, if I come up here and warn you, and I show you these typologies, these conflations, these parallels, these written things that are made up by man, go ahead. And he turned not from his wickedness. And you don't adhere to him because you want to keep a form of the spell and the programming that was given to our forefathers. You want to keep it and stay in it and think it's going to help you and it ain't helped nobody for thousands of years. Go ahead. Nor from his wicked way. Uh -huh. He shall die in his iniquity. You're still going to die in your iniquity of ignorance. It ain't going to be the shepherd's fault no more. Go ahead. But thou hast delivered thy soul. I'm going to deliver my soul by teaching what the most I put on my heart and the things that I have studied to show myself approved to you. Your job is to go rightly discern it, listen to it, pray and meditate on it, ask the most high to help you with understanding. Because one thing is for sure, we're not, not all on the same level and there's nobody that has never followed us going to jump on the live, jump on this lesson, and understand where we're at. That's, That's right. right. I don't care how long you think you've been in the truth, how long you think you're awakened, there's nobody new going to jump on here that ain't been following us a year, two years, three years, going to jump on here and act like they know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You're not going to pick it up like that. I don't care rabbi, priest, pope, you're not going to get on here and be like, what, what, what are they talking about? Because they're already in a dogma of doctrine that, that controls their mind and their thought process. You can only think from where you're at. So let's go back into these definitions. Typology and allegory. Let's get into part two. Go ahead. Typology. Uh -huh. A system used for putting things into groups according to how they are similar. Uh, typology. You're putting things into a group according to their similarities. Go ahead. The New Testament indications. Whoever wrote the New Testament 
And whoever's trying to make the New Testament tie into the Old Testament, go ahead. Of patterns and people. There's indications of patterns and people in the Old Testament. So these Greeks, who are not Hebrew and not prophets, put together typologies tying patterns, events, and people to the Old Testament. Go ahead. Who were in a sense created to serve as prefigured shapes of what Christ would do. Listen to this. This is their definition. This is no different than supersessionism. Mm -hmm. This is no different than whatever. Ancient Jesus, all the stuff that they teach at seminary school. Mm -hmm. so whoever wrote the New Testament, not inspired by the Most High, right. put in typology, mm -hmm. put in conflations, mm -hmm. tying and, pre and predestinating patterns. And people to lead to Jesus. I mean, I see some brothers arguing today, and I heard a pastor say, Are you, tell me, are you saying that everything in the Bible doesn't lead to Jesus? I heard a Hebrew say, Yes, everything in the Bible leads to Jesus. I want to ask the Hebrew, How does Greeks and people 100 years after the death of the so called Christ mm -hmm. tie events in the Old Testament to what's written in the New Testament? <laughs> he did. His 12 is dead. His 70 is dead. The 120 is dead. So how in the world do these colonizers get a hold to the scrolls and now typology and then predestinate prophecy from the Old Testament to show you Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus because it's divine by the Heavenly Father? Or do you believe in Jesus because crafty men wrote the New Testament from events and patterns and things in the Old Testament to lead you to believe that their Jesus is your God. That's it. Did I say it right? Yes, Did right. it come out right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. All right, let's keep going. Typology continues. A Christian form of biblical interpretation. What are you yes. saying, Pastor? What are you saying about Christianity? What are you saying about my Jesus? Do you mean the Jesus I believe in? You mean the Jesus that majority of the world believes in, whether they're in Christianity or Catholicism? Even Islam is saying they believe in Isis? You mean this person from so-called 2,000 years ago, the chronologically chronology, chronology given to us by man? They don't want you to think it's crafted and it's created by the devil. They want you to think everything is inspired by, <coughs> by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But by their definitions, that all the pastors that have gone through seminary school is taught, and I would, I would almost say that depending on whether you go to a black seminary school or a white seminary school, you might not be taught the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is there a such thing as a black seminary school? Who's the teachers in seminary? Are there black teachers in seminary? If there are not black teachers in seminary and you got a problem with our K through 12 curriculum mm -hmm. and our college curriculum, mm -hmm. why wouldn't one assume that there's a problem with our seminary curriculum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I, my bad. A Christian form of biblical interpretation that proceeds on the assumption that God. Wait, stop, stop, stop. Their definition a Christian, not Islamic. Not Judaism, not Hebrew. A Christian interpretation. Mm -hmm. The scriptures say there's no problem interpretation. That's right. But now Christians got an interpretation mm -hmm. that proceeds on the assumption. Listen, typology it is the perceived assumption. Mm -hmm. It is a Christian interpretation. Oh, what, what, what's wrong with that, bro? Uh, everything's wrong with Christianity. Absolutely. How many Israelites going to be speaking about Christianity and yet still follow Christ? It's starting to make no sense to me. Mm -hmm. Because most Christians don't know about supersessionism. No, most Christians don't know about Christology. And I'm, I'm going to say most Hebrews don't know about typology. Mm -hmm. Because if they knew about typology, then you would see that Christ is a configuration of Old Testament patterns, events, and people, 
and people patterns and events outside of Israel. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, Al, from the top. A Christian form of biblical interpretation that proceeds on the assumption that God placed anticipations. Anticipations. We read it through the Old Testament. Christians don't want you to read the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But if the New Testament is supposed to be an interpretation, a typology, and anticipations from the old, well, why don't they teach from it? That's right. Because <laughs> they're lying. I would, I would beg to say most Hebrew teachers is teaching from the New Testament. Yeah, majority. Keep them all about the commandments and then everything else is Paul's writings and gospel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Of Christ in the laws, events, and people of the Old Testament. That's a, that's a, that's a way of saying Christ is written through the whole book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christ is written through the whole book. So... Just like saying, search the scriptures and then you'll find me. Search the scriptures, you'll find me. <laughs> but what if they put that anticipation in the gospel? Exactly. They wrote it. They wrote it. It wasn't inspired by the Most High. Mm -hmm. Who said? Who said Matthew wrote it? Who said Mark wrote a book? The Greeks. Who said John wrote a book? The Greeks. Who is saying that the New Testament is inspired by God? The Greeks. You know, Hebrews said. Go ahead. <laughs> Unlike allegory. Allegory. Which features an episode having many elements of metaphor and Im imagery uh -huh. in, uh, to convey a truth or idea. So in the scripture, an allegory is using images to give you a, a comparison to what is being written. Mm -hmm. Allegory is not typology. Correct. Allegory is trying to make you think of a thing using images. Yes. Right? But typology, go ahead. Uh, typically, uh, excuse me, let me start over. Unlike allegory, uh -huh. which, is, which features an episode having many elements of metaphor and imagery to convey a truth or idea, uh -huh. typological patterns in scripture are more discrete as real phenomena. They are phenomena. real discrete as phenomena, meaning whatever is in the old, it actually anticipates prognosticates, prophesies, or yes. pre prefigures towards Jesus. Go ahead. Persons and uh, events. Persons and events in the Old Testament. Correspond and anticipate future fulfillment in similar yet different persons and events. Primarily, Jesus Christ and the redemption he accomplishes. Let's say, let me say it this way. <laughs> I'm not saying that the Old Testament doesn't prophesy doesn't prefigure, doesn't predestine a savior to come. Mm -hmm. What I'm arguing is who said it was Jesus Christ? Right. If his name ain't Jesus Christ, correct. And the doctrine associated in Christianity to Jesus Christ yeah. ain't even what's written. Mm -hmm. And what's written ain't even written by Israelites. Mm -hmm. Who said it? Who said it? That's the question. <clears throat> Who said? Did you finish that? Yes, sir. All right. Let's keep going. You got to get out this intro, right? So let's pick it up where we left off last week. Let's look at the doctrine of Jesus. Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Let's just see what was written in the scriptures about the prefigured predestination, the typology of the whole testament is supposed to lead to Jesus, right? So mm -hmm. now let's look in the, in the gospel, Matthew 24, start at verse 4. Huh? And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. <clears throat> Take heed that no man deceive you. Okay, there we go again, talking about deceptiveness, craftiness, right? Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, uh -huh. saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and shall deceive me. That's crazy. Now, whoever wrote this got Jesus talking like his actual surname is Christ. Christ just means anointed. That's right. Christ means Messias in the Greek, Mashiach. Mm -hmm. There have already been hundreds of Mashiachs before Jesus, right. and there's been Mashiachs after him, yeah, now, right. now he's saying, and they got it in capital letters, they're going to come saying, I am Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Christ. That's his last name now. now we're supposed to read it like it's red letters, right? Yeah. So the same of the whole world is saying there's going to come people saying I am the savior of the whole world and deceive me. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know that this ain't the deceiving? Right. And the deception. <laughs> Drop down to verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive me. Well, we already know many prophets. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, they are already talking about false prophets and, and, and false shepherds coming. He, he ain't saying nothing different than them what, what has been. But what he's saying here in future prophecy, now he's saying there's going to become many false prophets that are going to deceive many, right? Mm -hmm. Now drop down to verse 23 and 24. Go ahead. Then, if any man shall say unto you, uh -huh. Lo, here is Christ, uh -huh. or there believe it not. So what are we supposed to believe about the Jews trying to rebuild the third temple and ushering in their Christ, mm -hmm. sacrificing their red heifer? What are we supposed to believe about that? Because they're waiting on a man to come That's and right. say, this is our Christ, and they're supposed to rule and reign, right? Mm -hmm. so, so who the heck are we looking for? If the Jews is looking for their Christ, they're over there building the third temple in the red heifer. Well, well, what is the Catholic Church? Is the Catholic Church waiting on that same Savior? And if the Catholic Church is waiting on that same Savior, that the Jews is bring, bringing the red heifers, and they're building an altar, and they're about to take over the dome of the rock, then who, who are we supposed to be looking for? Because that Messiah is going to benefit the Jews and the Christians, not you, Mr. and Mrs. Negro, Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. Israelite. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? So, so the Christ they're looking for is, is that this Christ. Some of us say, no, we waiting on Yeshua. We waiting on Yahoo, Yahoo, Yeshua. Wait, wait a minute. 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 But in our, in, in, we supposed to be waiting for somebody to crack the sky. That's a God. Right. That's a spirit. Mm -hmm. So are we waiting for a God and a spirit, or are we waiting for a man? Exactly. Or somebody yeah. told us that this man is going to be the Antichrist. Well, how is he the Antichrist if the Jews who the Hebrews follow, they waiting on the bet them to tell them when the uh, green bar is. They waiting on them to tell them the, the signs of the heavens. They waiting on the rabbis to give them information. The Christian pastors is with the rabbis. Hey, mm -hmm. and all the top uh, world Christians are with them. So if the Christians is with the Jews and the Jews is waiting on their Messiah and he is to come, then who is this? We done got into Hebrewism and now we done become black nationalists. We done made this guy black. Right. We done gave this guy a new name because we right. speak Hebrew better than the Jews. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're not even looking at well, who wrote these books anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Believe it not. Okay, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs. Christ just means anointed. Yes. They're going to rise. Also know to people, go ahead. And false prophets. False prognosticators. I, I'd say everybody that's in this New Testament is false prophets. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And shall show great signs and wonders. Uh -huh. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Hey, let me tell y'all something. There is prophecy where things that are happening now were written thousands of years ago. Right. But what if you took control over people's culture, resources, holy places, and documents, mm -hmm. and you went back and changed chronology mm -hmm. to say and fit what you wanted it to fit? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying. There's real prophecy, right? And then there's prophecy that man backdates to say what he wants. Mm -hmm. Case in point: 
Uh, some people need that just flew over their head. Yeah. <laughs> Why do all of you guys believe now that the Simpsons was prophesying things years ago that are happening now more than you believe the prophecy of the Holy Scripture? Come on now. Yeah. We talked about the World Trade Centers. Yeah. They talked about Kobe Bryant out a helicopter. They talked about COVID-19. Is that prophecy or is it men making things happen in the timeline that they wanted to from when they told you they was going to do it? There you go. There you go. What's that book? Uh, the Pale Horse book? Mm -hmm. how, how can they tell you something is going to happen and then when it happens, act like they're God? All they're saying is 2024, hey, in 2050, this is going to happen. What happened in 2049, 2050, 2051? They said this was going to happen, right? Absolutely. So they make it happen. Right. You so what am I saying, Rob? If they say a Messiah is going to come and sit in the third temple, that means they're going to take the third temple, they're going to sacrifice red heavens in the altar, and there is going to be a Messiah that comes. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the creator's on their side? No, that means they're able to create the history that they want because they control everything, including the canonization of this book and the prophecies in it because they changed the chronology through typology to give you a good to a Messiah and a Savior that came, but when he came, he didn't save nobody and he wasn't anointed. That's right. He wasn't anointed, and he didn't fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament that a Savior is supposed to fulfill. Absolutely. The sticks are still separated. The nations are still divided. Mm -hmm. Do we read all this up? Yes, sir. All right. So deceived the very elect. The very elect have been deceived in what? The Jesus doctrine. Mm -hmm. All the doctrine. You can't get rid of the doctrine the and world. keep yes, Jesus sir. So you want to get rid of the doctrine, change the name Jesus to Yeshua, your whole sure, and think and think we're not deceived. I would say the alphabet boys and the people that are you that are, are, are training up people to go deceive the nations, I would say that is very crafty. Mm -hmm. To create these people in these FBI schools, alphabet schools, send them out into communities. They are very charismatic, and they, through the uh, part of Renaissance and through all this time, you get these charismatic people, you give them a little money, people start believing in money and wealth, and they start following and spreading doctrine. Then when that starts to wear off, you raise up some more prophets to start deceiving and teaching a whole other version of the same thing. And we just keep getting rewritten versions of the same doctrine. That's why we got a church on every corner, and we're about to have an Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite camp on every corner. Mm -hmm. The movement is doing nothing but creating people that are being paid to keep spinning the same new story, not saying nothing different. Right. It's copycat. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Change the name, change the code, change the outfits. Same issue. Majority of this world is followed. And they are looking for people and religions to follow doctrine that fits them, fits you. Second Corinthians chapter 11. But it's all just a regurgitated form of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Which is told, the New Testament is a totally new doctrine and a totally new God from Torah and Tanakh. It is. It just, you can't, you're trying to conflate and you're trying to synchronize the old with the new, but that's because they gave you the new in typology through secret code patterns and this to, pre, to, to show towards a God and a Jesus that they created for the new slave. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 11, mm -hmm. verse 3. Go ahead. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtil subtility so through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Listen to this. Listen to how they write it in here. This, this is how they got people. You, they say, we don't want to worship that old God. You know, he's an old mean God. We want to worship Jesus. Jesus is love. Man, watch what they say. Hear me. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Okay. 
whom have not whom we have not preached, uh -huh. or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, uh -huh. or another or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. We said a whole bunch mm -hmm. in this verses right here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about being the guy, subtlety, the simplicity in Christ. Is being a Christian really simple? Yeah, because you don't have to do nothing mm -hmm. but believe in somebody that somebody made up for you to believe in. Three. Listen to the context of the Gospels. The Jews, the Israelites, was not checking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. They was at war doing skirmishes fighting off the colonizers. Mm -hmm. They were being colonized by the Greeks and Romans, and the other nations around them were involved helping the Romans keep the Israelites subdued. Mm -hmm. That's what was going on here, sister brother. Go ahead. Let's see, where we at? You read verse 4? Yes, sir. Okay. Go, uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. So now you're talking about if anyone come preaching another Jesus and another spirit. Wow, now Paul is prophetic. Why well, say that if he was preaching to Gentiles in Corinth? Right. They already was worshiping somebody else. Why would they care about who's worshiping Jesus or not in Corinth? Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Go ahead. Hereby know ye the spirit of hell. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Man, read that again out from the top. First John chapter 4, verse 2. Read it right. Go ahead. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh of God. Come in the flesh is of hell. So John is saying that everyone that says the jealous Elohim mm -hmm. who said there's none other but me mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Now he's in the New Testament saying he ain't saying but John is saying. John is saying. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ came from El in the flesh or is he saying Jesus Christ is El in the flesh is not of El. What, what is he saying? Okay, let's look at it again. Hereby know ye the spirit of air. Oh, we're talking about the Ruach and Desh, okay. Right? The spirit of air, right? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of air. He did come in the flesh is of air. Okay, go ahead. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of him. And this is that spirit of anti-Christ. Oh man, Ra'a, anti-Christ. Well, 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 who are the Jews and the Christians that's waiting on the Messiah to come in the third in the third temple? If I'm an anti-Christ, who are they? Who is your pastor? Who, who is your moray that you're listening to? Who is he waiting on? <laughs> is he not telling you he's waiting on that same Messiah? He's waiting is. on somebody different? We prophesying on a man to come. Mm -hmm. The New the Old Testament was prophesying on a, a Savior to come. Mm -hmm. But here he's talking about Jesus came in the flesh to do what? He didn't save his people from their enemies. No. He didn't rejoin the southern and northern north kingdom. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring the Israelites back into the land. Mm -hmm. But there's people over there saying, they Jews and they back in the land. Mm -hmm. What are we doing out here? Hebrew Israelites fighting against Hebrew Israelites. And it's just another form of Christianity. And if you're going to be a Christian, you might as well go along with Pastor Hagen, Hagen, and all the Christians that side with the Jews who are waiting on that Messiah. You ain't no different. Okay. You can't change the name. You keep the doctrine. Oh, you say you dropped the doctrine. So where is your doctrine coming from? Somebody's teaching another Jesus out here. Yeah. And I'm saying... They might have just gave you this whole doctrine because this Jesus don't line up with the prophecy of the Old Testament. You sure don't. You want to knock Christianity, but not knock everything 
Christianity teaches about the same Jesus, Yeshua, Yahushua, you worship. Go ahead, I. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Wait a minute, he's saying there is already an Antichrist in the world at the time of John. Mm -hmm. Man, y'all gotta stay tuned to part three, man. I'm gonna lay this thing out, man. You just gotta quit pitching. Quite quit getting in your feelings like a little child tossed to and fro and just listen to what I'm bringing out. I don't care if you don't like it. Hey, I didn't even like hearing the Hebrew doctrine when I first heard it, but then I came to go, go into that truth. Now I'm, I'm surpassing that. I'm seeing all the holes in all of it. You, you, you can't just reteach me the same thing and not expect me to figure it out one day. Right. I'm just that not, I'm not that gullible, and you're just not that charismatic, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Now I'm not, not. Let's go even further. Let's go back to First Corinthians chapter 15, and let's see how they just bang this doctrine of Jesus into our head, which has people fearing Jesus but not really fearing sin. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all fear somebody that we think is coming and is coming again, but y'all not even worried about the sins you keep committing, which is not going to have you pleasing in the most high in the first place. That's right. Stop sinning. Y'all worried about what we said about Jesus as opposed to if he did come and die for your sins, why are you still sinning? Y'all using grace as a get out of, as get out of hell free path. First Corinthians 15, verse 12. Go ahead. Now, Christ be preached that, that he rose from the dead. Uh -huh. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Hey, did um, people rise from the dead before Jesus? Mm -hmm. Before Jesus died and rose again, did people already raise, rose from the dead? Oh, no. Yeah, they did. Oh, I'm sorry, they did. Yes, they did. Absolutely. They did. We're not talking about last year's season. Mm -hmm. But when Christ was supposed to be crucified, people they rose from the dead. dead. That's right. And they walked, they said they walked the city. Go ahead. Verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? But people already rose from the dead before Christ died. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith also vain. So if you don't believe this guy who came out of nowhere into Judea that did miracles, was he the first person to do miracles? No. But he, he did miracles. Moses did. He was supposed to have died on the cross and rose again. If you don't believe this happened, here go Paul preaching again to Corinth. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking to people in Jerusalem. No. Nope. He's talking to people in Corinth. That's supposed to be his. Now, let me ask you why Paul was telling these people in Corinth that if they don't believe Jesus, then they his preaching is in vain and their faith is in vain. Who, what was the elders teaching in Jerusalem? <laughs> what was James and Peter and all them teaching in Jerusalem? Was they teaching this? Mm -hmm. See, I'm not side of the bar. I'm, I'm asking questions you're not asking your pastor. What was the elders in Jerusalem teaching while Paul was running around to all of these places teaching this, this right here? Go ahead. Yeah, and we have found false witness of God, of El, because we have testified of El that he raised up Christ whom he... Wait a minute, that ain't Christianity. If Christ is El, if Christ is the God, why didn't he raise himself up? Come on, man. They don't see it. And, and if Christ, and if Christ, if somebody was above him, and we know in the Old Testament, the other hand of the Old Testament, the hell of the Old Testament said there ain't no other God. There ain't none. Then if there ain't no other gods and Christ is the Son of God, then why are Christians today worshiping him like he is the God? Because they say he is. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and we have found false witness of El because we have testified of El that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so, be that the dead rise not. Go ahead. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Uh -huh. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. 
We are not in your seniors. We are yet in your seniors. This is so contrary because in the book of John, mm -hmm. when, it, when he died on the cross, it said the dead, the tombs were open and the dead were raised. Yes. Dead people were raised before Jesus was raised. Right. How is that possible? And ain't nobody been raised since Jesus was raised. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now how does that make sense? Now listen, the most miserable people I know on this earth is Christians. Right. Mm -hmm. And they believe in the death and resurrection of Christ. Right. They are the most sinful, mm -hmm. the most argumentative people, mm -hmm. the most self-righteous people mm -hmm. on the earth. Mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. And Hebrew Christians are even worse. If a Christian is self-righteous, proud, then a Hebrew Christian is even worse. Because then they double down on their arrogance and say, we keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. These are the doctrines that make people believe they cannot live on this earth without Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if the devil is a deceiver and he don't create, he just recreates. Mm -hmm. Would he make up a story of a deity coming to replace the creator? Mm -hmm. And if he has you worshiping a new deity instead of the creator, then he's going to have a whole lot of company in the end. Right. What was his job, though? To go to and fro and to deceive man on earth. And the scriptures say that he's going to be ready, he's going to be released, right? Right. And he's going to Deceive the very elect. He's going to deceive the very elect. And we just read that the very elect was going to be deceived. Correct. We just read it. Are not the very elect already deceived? And the very elect are deceived now. But the very elect think they are correct and righteous in their well doing. Mm -hmm. But what better way to deceive people than to think that make them think that they are doing it the right way? They are following the right deity. They are following the right doctrine. They're in the right religion. My religion over your religion. We all spiritual. We all worship a higher power, but that higher power is different for every one. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now let's go look at some of these typologies. Revelation 22 and 18. Read Revelation 2 and 18. Now. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Uh -huh. If any man shall add unto these things, El shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. What are you saying, Rob? I'm saying that the writers, creators, and canonizers of this Bible, the people that canonized it, Added patterns, mm -hmm. events, mm -hmm. similarities, anticipations, prophecies, and people to prefigure and predestine and pro prophesy about the coming of Jesus, opposed to the Savior that the Israelites prophesied to come. Mm -hmm. They made up somebody new. That's right. They made up somebody totally different. And, and go, go figure this: if the Christians is waiting on the Jews Messiah. We got a problem. Because the Jews don't believe in the New Testament. Right. The Jewish people barely practice Torah and Tanakh. Mm -hmm. They follow more Talmud than Torah and Tanakh. Mm -hmm. So now the Christians who are Catholics mm -hmm. who created Christianity and Jesus mm -hmm. are following behind the Jews waiting on their Messiah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Who are you waiting for? And where did you get your knowledge from other than these main two religions? Right. Because the Hebrew is like majority of them get their doctrine from Judaism. Right. They practice Judaism in many ways 
but they won't believe it. Let's look at the topology of Melchizedek. We got, we got, we got brothers, Hebrew Israelites going around saying they are the new priestly order of Melchizedek on earth today. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Genesis 14 and 18. This is what I'm saying. We got brothers right now. I mean, we are the most spiritually ignorant people on the planet of the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will take something from afar, from people who don't look like us, take it as our own, and do it better than them and say they're doing it wrong. Right. Did y'all hear what I said? <laughs> We're taking religions from other people, from other parts of this planet, and saying we're doing it better than they're doing. Mm -hmm. Genesis 14 and 18, what it says? And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high. El Elyon. He was a priest. Verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram. Blessed, blessed, blessed be Abram. All the religions of the earth, the major religions of the earth come from where? Abraham. They all start with Abraham. This, this is the deception. This is how everybody's confused. Everyone's spiritual. But now we got the three main religions of the world. Judaism, I mean, Judaism isn't even a main religion, but the top two is Islam and Christianity. Christianity is broken down into Orthodox, Catholicism, and uh, uh, Christian, Protestant, right? Yes. And then you got Islam, the major two, right? Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Melchizedek was an actual person. Yes. He was a priest and king of Salem. Yes. Go ahead. And he blessed him and said, either, either he was there or he wasn't, but it says he was an actual king. He was an actual priest of Salem. He blessed Abraham and said what? Blessed be Abram of the Most High Heaven. Of El Elyon, go ahead. Possessor of heaven and earth. Possessor of heaven and earth. Now when we look at the definition of Salem, right? Shalem or Shalom, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 8004, it said Salem is a what? An early name of Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So Melchizedek was an actual priest mm -hmm. and king yes. of a place before we know it, a place before Moses was there, mm -hmm. a place before King David was there. Yes. There was a king and a priest. Can I ask y'all a question? What was he a priest? Uh, Come on now. What religion and doctrine did Mel Kesby oversee? Mm -hmm. This is before Moses on the mount. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking a simple question. Sometimes simple questions are complex to the ignorant. If you don't know, you don't know. You don't have to glitch about it. Mm -hmm. It's an easy question. He actually exists. Salem obviously existed before Abraham even came from the Ur of Chaldees. I just said so. Before Abraham came from the Ur of Chaldees, Melchizedek mm -hmm. was already a priest mm -hmm. and a king. Guess where? In Canaan. Come on, huh? Where do y'all think Jerusalem is today? <laughs> Jerusalem was supposed to be in Canaan, right? That's right. The Canaanites had a deity. What was the name of the deity that Melchizedek worshipped in his priesthood in Jerusalem when Abraham and Lot was just still running around fighting the other kings in Canaan? Yeah. I said a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Salem means what? Peace. So Jerusalem means what? City of peace. City of peace. Shalom. Shalom. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It said a place of which Melchizedek was king. It says most Jewish commentators affirm that it is the same as the Jerusalem today. So follow me in the chronology backwards. Yes, sir. Please. King David. Mm -hmm. The judges. Yes. 
wilderness. Yes. Moses gets the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Before that, we're in Egypt 430 years. Mm -hmm. Before that, you got uh, Abraham having Isaac and Jacob. And before that, you got Abraham and Lot running around Canaan and Edom in and out of Egypt. And before that, you got Abraham over in the Earth oh, Chaldees worshiping who? Yeah. Mm. Then he comes to Haran. He comes to Canaan between Bethel and Ai. And then he goes to war with the kings of the land because of Lot. Mm -hmm. They took Lot. He runs and gives and brings an offering to Melchizedek, who is worshiping who in the priesthood? Yeah. Can't be Yah. Nope. Can't be Yahuwah. Can't be Yahuwah because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know him by their name. That's what it says in scripture. That's right. That's a whole other lesson. We already been there and done that, right? right? Let's keep going. So what is a priest, huh? Hebrews 35 and 48. Kohen. A Kohan. Uh huh. Uh, so it is chief, chief ruler. Uh huh. A priest, a prince, a principal, a principal officer. Mm -hmm. All right. What's a priest? Hebrews thirty-five forty-eight. Kohan to meditate in religious, to officiate as a priest. To officiate in the priesthood of a religious organization. So what religion? Was Melchizedek priest over? Ain't that a great question? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great question. But then we got a problem though. Watch this. Because we got Christians and Israelites trying to say Jesus was Melchizedek. Yes. How could Jesus yeah. be everybody in the Bible? How could he be a type of shadow of everybody in the Bible? Oh, wow. This is just a question we throw around, right? Mm -hmm. How can he be everybody at the same time, but then really? Come in flesh and do nothing. Right. But get killed. But get killed and die, 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 die for the sins of Jesus. everybody. The whole story of the Old Testament is centralized in Judea, the Israelites, to Jerusalem, right? Yeah, there was, so there was Salem before it was Jerusalem in Judea, Israel. Right. Before all of that was created, the city of Salem was there. Mm -hmm. It already had a king. Mm -hmm. And he was a king prince, mm -hmm. uh, a priest king. Priest king, yeah. Of what religion? Then we get into Hebrews, and now the scholars don't know who wrote Hebrews. It yeah, could be Paul, yeah. it could be yeah. not. And so then we go to Hebrews 7, and let's look at the typology, because everything prefigures and predestinates to Jesus. To Jesus. He, he's the this God. is crazy right here. He is the He's he's now he's a priest from the order of Melchizedek, but he's a king. But when he came, he said, "You say I'm a king. I ain't say I was a king." <laughs> Hebrews seven and one through three. Go ahead. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, uh -huh. priest of the Most High El. See, they take from the old, and then they try to add it into this New Testament gospels and epistles. And try to act like they super prophetic and everything leads to a God, a God man that they created for you to worship. Go ahead. Right. Um, From the top. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High Adam, who met Abram, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. Go ahead. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace. Is this an actual person or is this a metaphor? That's a metaphor right there. Is this, is this, a, is this Jesus incarnate back then or this is an actual person named Melchizedek who was a king priest of the city of peace. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 3. Without father. Who is our father? Jesus or Melchizedek? <laughs> I know what I've heard people teach. You know what you've heard people teach. Mm -hmm. But if Melchizedek was a real man, a real king priest, where is the book of Melchizedek? Where is the story of Melchizedek? Because they're about to take verse 3 and say, see, 
That's Jesus. Yeah. He was Melchizedek. Watch this. Go ahead. Without father. Melchizedek was our father. Without mother. He was without mother. Without descent. He had no descent. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Now, was this actually true? Or did they write this book to typology and to foreshadow Melchizedek to be Jesus the Christ? Did they use typology and synchronization to make Jesus Christ have the same properties of Melchizedek? Yeah. Because it didn't even say verse 3 back where in, in Genesis where we read it, did it? But now all of a sudden, the book of Hebrews, which nobody know who wrote, all of a sudden say he was without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, go ahead, nor end, or nor end of life, but made life unto the son of El. Wait a minute. If the son of God is Jesus, is this Melchizedek made like him, or is, Mel, is he made like Melchizedek? I'm confused. Because right here it says Melchizedek is made like the son of God. So could he just have been another Messiah and Savior or priest king that was before King David? Because Jesus Christ, when he came, he wasn't king of nothing. King of nothing. And if he came back today, he has to make a place for him to rule because it don't even exist right now for him to rule. The people ain't there. The place ain't there, is it? Nope. So now, right here in verse 3, it's saying Melchizedek is made like unto the Son of God. Go ahead. Abide a priest continually. So if he was a priest continually, what was the need for the Levitical priesthood? <laughs> That's a whole other lesson. I already got it going. We'll get to it in a few weeks. Let's go to verse, drop down to verse 10. Go ahead. For he was yet in the loins of his father. Who was in the loins of his father? Jesus? Read it out. When For he was yet he was in the loins of, of, of his father when Melchizedek met him. When he met who? We're still talking about Abraham, right? <laughs> Melchizedek met, met Abraham. Jesus was in the loins of Joseph, his father? I thought Jesus came from the angel. Come on now. The Holy Ghost is Jesus then. So if Abraham Melchizedek, <coughs> who was in the Lord's of his father? Who are we talking about? Melchizedek has no beginning and no end of days. Mm -hmm. Right? He was made like the son of man. But verse 10 now it says, for he is yet in the loins of his father. Who is he? We say El got loins? El got sperm. What is it saying? It's saying he was yet in the loins of his father. Who was in the loins of his father? Because Melchizedek is already get, getting ties from Abraham. So who was in Abraham's loins or who was in the heavenly father's loins? Who are we talking about? Are we talking about Jesus in the loins of Abraham or are we talking about Jesus in the loins of the heavenly father? What, which, which is it? Who's going to be prophetic? Who, who's going to be in the comments making super spiritual scriptures, Googling, looking at commentary, trying to put answers in the comment section? Just stop trying to know everything and answer the question logically in yourself. Who, are, who is the context of chapter 7? We're talking about Melchizedek, Abraham, and Melchizedek made like of the son of God, mm -hmm. son of El. Right? Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 13. Go ahead. For if of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Okay, so we also talking about another tribe other than the tribe of Levi because Levi was the priesthood mm -hmm. called out of the 12 tribes right. which had no portion, right, of land or anything. They did the service of El, right? right. So now they're trying to say now there's going to be a priest coming from another tribe, verse 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Y'all, 
In, four, in 14, it's talking about Jesus came from Judah. Then verse 10 is saying Jesus is in the loins of who? Just keeping it real and keeping it in context. Mm -hmm. In verse 14, we're talking about Jesus is coming out of Judah. Mm -hmm. Then who, whose loins is Jesus in Abraham's loins or is Jesus in the loins of the Heavenly Father? The Heavenly Father got loins. Joseph. He sent an extension of the Ruach down into Mary and conceived from his loins to her womb and had Christ. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. We watched the movie uh, Hercules the other day, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Y'all see y'all remember how Hercules was born in the movie? Hercules' mom was married to the king. He comes into the bedroom, and the wife is floating in the air, and Zeus is making out with his mother, and then the son is born, and he knows that it's not his. He tried to kill Hercules mm -hmm. all the days of his life. I ain't watched the new movie Hercules on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Somebody tried to kill David all the days of his life, too, didn't No. Somebody tried to kill uh, Moses and Christ, but, but I'm talking about how the Bible is saying Christ conceived was the same way Hercules was conceived. Mm -hmm. Born of a virgin. Then we just watched uh, Percy Jackson series on Disney with my daughter. Guess how Percy Jackson was born and conceived? Mm -hmm. Poseidon came and found his mother who was a virgin yep. at the campgrounds and she conceived and had Percy Jackson. So it looks like these Greek and Roman gods have a thing with making virgins pregnant. Oh man, who created Christianity in the story of Jesus? Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, which of the which of which the tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Uh -huh. And it is yet far far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek. After the what? Similitude of Melchizedek. Go ahead. That arising another priest. So first Melchizedek was made like the Son of God. Now it's saying Jesus Christ is now of the similitude of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Who writing and putting this thing together? The Holy Spirit? No. Man. Mm -hmm. Man writing this. Yes. Yeah. Because it ain't adding up. Nope. It ain't adding up with the Christian doctrine of the Immaculate Conception and Mary being born of a virgin. These two stories contradict. Go ahead. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, uh -huh. but after the power of an endless life. Yeah, this is that crazy Christianity right here, man. This is not making no sense with the other doctrines of Christianity. It's just not making sense. They just put in typology patterns, going back through the scrolls, seeing the prophecies and the powerful people, and they're just trying to tie everything back to Jesus. Let's go drop down verse 17. Continue. For he testified, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Now Jesus all of a sudden is a priest. How many people talk about Jesus being a priest? What's he a priest on? What doctrine? If he wasn't in the temple, then what? Oh, this temple is not made with man's hands. So it ain't here yet. It's not here yet. Yep. There you go. His priesthood ain't here yet. So now we're waiting on yet another thing to come. But the Jews over there get ready to build a temple. They got hell peppers, altars. They got people practicing priesthood. They get ready for something, right? Drop down to verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety. Of a better testament. He was made a purity of a better testament. Testament means agreement, means covenant. What was his agreement and covenant between? Go ahead. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Where are these priests at? They're not on the earth right now. I don't see no priests right now that aren't that are going to suffer. Go ahead. But this man, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. An unchangeable priesthood. Go ahead. 
Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto El by him. So he's a priesthood. You got to go through him to get to El, but El is a jealous guy who say he don't share. He said nobody was on the throne reigning with him in the Torah and Tanakh. But now all of a sudden you got to go between, go ahead, being ever living to make intercession for them. Go ahead, or oh, oh, make an intercession for them that believe that Jesus Christ came after the order of Melchizedek. Now you go to another thing. You got to believe he was a king. You got to believe he came to save his people. Now you got to believe he was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. This guy is everything and all, but not yet. Not yet. But not yet. We are yet to see if any of these things come true. So while we're waiting for these things to come true, guess what the enemies are doing? They whooping our heads. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 8, 1 and 2, what it said. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of, of the majesty in the heavens. Now we got a high, we got a high priest, not God. But a high priest. Yeah, he, he a high priest. Now he ain't a God. Now we got a high priest that's equal with God. Is that why the Catholic Church think they victims of Christ? Now their priesthood is, is the representatives on the earth. This is crazy. You want to write, you want a priest on the throne, or you want God on the throne? What is, what is he? A priest, a king, a prophet, or God? He everything? Why we believe he's story? Go ahead. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not me. But that tabernacle ain't here yet. The priest ain't here yet. The people ain't saved yet. The people ain't in the land yet. You still got to answer for your sins right now. Mm -hmm. Typology. They made Melchizedek Jesus. But Melchizedek was a real person. Mm -hmm. But Jesus got all the qualities of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. How about Adam? Is Jesus Adam? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at verse 21. 1 Corinthians 15, start at verse 21. Go ahead. For it says, By man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Tell me you ain't heard a lesson about Jesus Christ being the new Adam. Tell me y'all ain't heard that lesson. Adam all died. What did Adam do? I thought Eve did it. Mm -hmm. And how could Adam stop Eve if Eve did it without Adam knowing? Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask the question again. If Eve sinned and Adam didn't know it because she didn't even confide in Adam before she did it, why is it Adam's fault? We still got that problem today. We got Eve still doing what she want. I don't got to talk to a man. I don't need nobody's permission. That's, that's, that's Eve. Y'all keep talking about Jezebel. Y'all got the spirit of Eve. Eve don't consult her husband. Eve don't consult her head. That's what happened. He didn't have his rib in order. And that's why marriages fail. 60% of marriages in divorce. Women are divorcing. I don't need to consult no man. That's Eve, Eve, Eve syndrome. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. But every man in his own order, uh -huh. Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. Man, so we got 2,000 years of people that are supposed to be Christ, and everybody still in 2024 is waiting on his coming. Yeah. Because he's supposed to bring something he ain't brought in yet. Adam brought death. They teaching us the Messiah coming or is it Jesus coming? Who coming to bring 
salvation because the Jews over there building the temple and they saying whoever they wait on about to bring them salvation. Mm -hmm. Genesis 3 verse 6 to 8. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit. No, she went and asked Adam, should I eat it? She took of the fruit there. No, uh, she went Say, Adam, Adam, where you at? No. Can I eat this fruit? No, she, she took. She didn't say nothing about Adam. She didn't ask Adam nothing. Mm -mm. But, she Adam seen, but Adam seen it. Yeah. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Uh -huh. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. He didn't ask where she got it from. He didn't ask what he didn't ask. So he wrote the order. She didn't ask him, and guess what he didn't do? He, he didn't, didn't ask him. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask him. He could have. He could have stopped it and said, "I am not eating it." Then the scripture we will be reading today is the woman sinned. The woman was punished. The woman was cursed. Because what it say when your woman make a vow or when. You know, your children make a vow, you can override that vow. Mm -hmm. But if you allow her to continue, if Adam went ahead and went eating the fruit, guess what? Now he in the wrong. But he could have annulled that vow. He could have rebuked her. He didn't rebuke her, so now he in trouble. He did eat. Go ahead. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. They knew that they were what? They were naked. So why are we talking about eating fruit in the scripture talking about they was naked? Right. What were they doing that when their eyes opened to what they was doing, they were convicted in their nakedness? They wasn't sitting up there eating no granny apple. Drop down to verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Oh, because he did rebuke her. I can rebuke whatever it is you're about to say and whatever it is you're about to do, but if you go ahead and do it, you, I'm no longer responsible for you. What did we read earlier in Ezekiel? I warned you. Mm -hmm. The punishment in your blood is not on my hands no more. But if I don't rebuke you and I don't say you ain't doing that, you can't go there, you can't do that, now I'm responsible for whatever happened when you go ahead and do it. See, he hearkened unto her voice. He didn't ask the most high, should I or should not. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh -huh. Thorns also in thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Wait. And in, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Drop down to verse 22. Go ahead. And El said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat it and live forever. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15 and read verse 45 and see what it say. So now they tie Christ to Melchizedek. They tie, now they tie, about to tie Christ to Adam. And we're going to see here, that when you get through all of it, they're going to keep tying into to almost every major figure in the scripture. First scripture is 15 to 45. Go ahead when you get it out. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh -huh. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So now you're the last Adam, the black Adam, it's a quickening spirit. Living soul, quickening spirit. Living soul, quickening spirit. Now the writer just tied through typology. Through 
Right. Father. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ to Adam. Mm -hmm. He preaches be preaching these parallels like it, it, it's the thing, like it's super prophetic. The Bible's full of mysteries and wonders. Watch this. Let's just go Romans 5 and just read 14. I know I had 12 to 14, but it's saying the same thing. Read Romans 5 and 14. Go ahead. Romans 5 and 14. Oh, sorry. Nevertheless, that reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. What was Adam's transgression? Wasn't no eating from the tree. I thought we was blocked from the tree. Mm -hmm. So what sin did Adam commit with Eve that Eve committed with the serpent or the subtle deceiver beguiler? What did the serpent teach Eve, which then she taught Adam, which men did or did not? It says, them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So from Adam to Moses, men wasn't committing this transgression. But from Moses to now, all of a sudden men are committing this transgression. Huh? Mm -hmm. What was it? Huh? That's a whole nother lesson. But keep mm -hmm. going. Who is the figure of him that was to come. Now Adam was what? The similitude, the figure of him to come. It's in there. So, it, so if the other verses didn't work, hopefully you see the typology <laughs> in, in this, in Romans. Yeah. The Corinthians didn't show it to you. Hopefully you see that Romans is using the same similitude that Christ came after Melchizedek. Melchizedek came like the son of man. Now Jesus Christ came after the similitude of who? Adam. Adam. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying it. I'm just reading it to you. Really? You might not like the way I'm reading it to you because I'm not super orative and charismatic, but let's look at Moses. Let's look at all of these similitudes here. My goodness. Uh, did you know that Moses, mm -hmm. they tried to kill Moses when he was a baby. Yeah. Pharaoh was killing the firstborn mm -hmm. of the Israelites. Guess what happened? They write the story of Jesus, and guess what? Herod all of a sudden was trying to kill the fourth, firstborn of the Israelites, even though Herod was an Edomite ruler and king over Judea mm -hmm. who was under the colonization of the Romans. Right. But the Israelite was in colonized, they was either colonized by the Egyptians mm -hmm. or colonized by the Romans. Right. Let's see what else. Oh, Moses was in the wilderness for 40 days up on the mount. Mm -hmm. So was Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's ironic. Moses had control over the sea. So did Jesus. Yeah. Moses fed the multitudes. So, so did Jesus. Jesus. Hey, did y'all know that Moses' face glowed? So did Jesus. Matthew 5, uh, excuse me, Matthew 17 and 2. Huh. Moses endured murmuring from the people. Now they wrote Jesus Christ. He had to endure murmuring from the what? From the people. Moses was discredited at home. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to go to the Israelites. He didn't think they was going to accept him. Guess what they wrote about Jesus? I don't know if the Israelites is going to accept me. The people in Jerusalem didn't accept him, did they? No. This is crazy. Moses was an intercessor. Yes, he was. Between the man and God, man and hell, and they wrote Jesus, Jesus to be an intercessor. intercessor. Is this crazy? <laughs> Moses spoke the oracles of hell. John 7 and 46, Jesus, they write about Jesus. Listen, it ain't hard for me to go back into the ancient text. I can go into the Numa Elish. I can go back to the uh, Ma'at, the book of uh, Coming Forth by Day and Night. I can go back to Torah and Tanakh. I can go back into the. Uh, Uterine, and I can create me a deity that looks like those deities. I can take the best from every religion and I can give the people an irresistible God, right? What else? Moses has 70 helpers. 
Luke 10 and 1 said Jesus ordained 70 disciples. Why don't we just re re rewrite this stuff? Both were presented at the transfiguration. Matthew 17, 1 and 5, they had Moses, Elijah, and Jesus at transfiguration. And then you got El saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Same thing. Harold Masters, boys, is there any difference on here? Oh, Moses was tempted by bread. Do not tempt El. Worship only El. And these are the same thing. When Jesus went in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. Don't eat bread. Don't tempt El. And worship no other God. What, what are we doing? This stuff already happened. What are you saying, bro? I, I'm not saying nothing. Do you not see the parallel? It's, it's, re, it's rewritten history. This stuff already happened again. A Christian pastor is going to be like, this is the type of challenge of, of the Son of God, of Jesus Christ himself. Wait a minute. Or it's a, 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 rewrite, a rewritten history by Greek scribes. Yeah. How about that? So we got Melchizedek, we got Adam, now we got Moses. Yeah. Let's see another pattern yeah. of events in people and places. How about Joseph. Oh, I, said I got pause. Joseph. Let's look at these. Go ahead, uh, number one. Number one. Raised from earth. You know, Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit, mm -hmm. and he was raised out of the earth and sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. So in 1 Corinthians 15 and 4, John 19, Jesus Christ was what? Raised from Raised from the tomb. How about number two? Sold for silver. Joseph was sold <laughs> for a certain amount of silver was given to his brothers. Genesis 37, 28. How about Jesus Christ? Judas. Judas was paid what? 30, 30 shekels, shekels of silver. 30 shekels of silver. Same story. Joseph and Jesus. How about number three? Genesis 37, 3. Joseph was the blood, of son. blood son of Abel. That's right. Or blood son of Jacob. I think it says blood son of Abel. How about Matthew 3 and 17? Jesus was beloved son. Beloved son of God. That's right. Number four. Stripped of his clothes. Joseph was stripped of his clothing before he was thrown in the pit. Mm -hmm. How about Matthew 27, 28? Stripped of his clothing and whipped. He was stripped of his clothing and whipped before he was crucified. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Verse 5. Salvation. Joseph brought salvation to his people. Yes. Genesis 45. Now we get Romans 11, 26. Now they say there's salvation in no other but Jesus. Jesus is going to bring salvation to the children of Israel. Has Jesus brought salvation to Israel? No. In 2024, according to the chronology of the Romans, mm -hmm. has Jesus brought salvation to his people yet? No, he died. He died. He ain't brought salvation to his people yet. But Joseph brought salvation to him. He did. He saved him from the family. Mm -hmm. How about verse 6? Bow before him. The 70 that came out of Canaan, they came, they they came, came and bowed Joseph. before Joseph, who was second in command mm -hmm. in all of Egypt and Judea. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, because Egyptians ruled, ruled all that at the time. That's right. So all the people bowed before him. So then in Philippians 2 and 10, it's saying all the nations of people will bow before Jesus. Jesus. Have they right. bowed before him yet? No. Nope. Ain't nobody bowed before Jesus yet. Say to me, shall bow. The northern and southern kingdom ain't even together, huh? No, sir. They are not in the land. No. Nope. And Jesus ain't even back yet ruling in the land. But all Christians is waiting on Jesus to come back because all nations are going to bow before him. It didn't happen 2,000 years ago. So who came 2,000 years ago? Because the prophecy is that someone is going to come back and all nations are going to bow before him. He's going to be the savior and the king over them. He's going to rule from Zion. While we still waiting on something to happen that 2,000 <coughs> years ago they say this guy came, he the savior, he the king, he the priest, he the prophet. We didn't need to preach over nothing. 
He's only prophesied what was already prophesied and things that are to come already happened. Mm -hmm. He ain't the priest. He don't have no tabernacle yet. And he has his own throne. He's supposed to sit on David's throne. He sit on the throne, but he sit on the throne as a priest. He ain't sit on the throne as a God. But Christians worship him as God. Right. Or the son of God. Yeah. If I'm a God, why am I calling myself a priest? Mm -hmm. Why am I a prophet? Prophets prophesy about God. Prophesy, prophets prophesy the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. Ain't that what the definition say? Prophets prophesy the word of the supreme deity. Man, my finger is greasy. All right, let's look at Joshua. Yehoshua. Yeah, the name given to Hosea yeah, from Moses. Joshua. How saved was given his name by Moses. We can say Yahweh worship, Yahweh worship, Yahweh worship came with Moses on Mount Sinai. Jesus and Joshua was supposed to be the same word in Hebrew. But they may have given you guys another deity. What does Hebrews 8 4 say, y'all? It says, For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Hebrews 8 and 4. Let's see, Hebrews 8 and 4, yes, sir. Four and eight is it backwards? Mm -hmm. Hebrews four and eight. Mm -hmm. Yes, sister. Hebrews four and eight. Look, I see the eight right there. It's just, it's just I typed it back. Hebrews four and eight. Slide. Yes. Hebrews four and eight. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Can I ask y'all a question? Is this an error? Is it a mistranslation? Is it a breadcrumb? Does that say Jesus or does that say Joshua in your Bible? My Bible says Joshua. My Hebrews 4 and 8 says Jesus. My Bible says Jesus. Mine says Joshua. Your Bible says Joshua. Yeah. When I pull this off of Bible Gateway, it says Jesus. Y'all do know those words should be the same. In Hebrew, Jesus should, but but Jesus is an English translation. So tell me why throughout the New Testament the translators didn't just say your Savior, your Lord and Savior is Joshua. Why they have to make up a new word? What does that word mean if when you go into translation they say it's supposed to be Joshua in Hebrew? Three languages spoken: mm -hmm. Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? In 2024, or somebody was saying Jesus, somebody was saying Joshua. Yeah. In the context of this story, Joshua. who's supposed to be given, who's supposed to be given rest? Jesus had given them rest. Is this a, a, a Freudian slip, or is this the translators through typology trying to tie everything to Jesus? Because obviously in the context of the story, we're talking about Joshua, Joshua. and we're talking about mm -hmm. what it say in the New International Version? The New International says, for if Joshua had given them rest, El would not have spoken later about another day. Drop down. What it say in the New Living Translation? Now if Joshua had succeeded in giving them rest, El would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. Why put Jesus there? Jesus is Melchizedek. <laughs> Jesus was Adam. Mm -hmm. Jesus first came as the first Adam. Yeah. Then came the second Adam. Adam. Then, Jesus, Jesus, Moses. then is Moses. Mm 
Now, now Jesus is Joshua. Now he's Joshua. How is Joshua and Moses alive at the same time? God just split himself and walked. One was a teacher, one was a student. El told Moses he couldn't make it, and then he transformed himself into Joshua? It's more. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, and watch this. They did it again. They just didn't do it there in the Bible. They did it in Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. They tried to show every major person in the Old Testament. They tried to lead it to this creation they made called Jesus the Christ, which is not his first and last name, but they made it an epitaph. They made it like Caesar, like something bigger than what it means, and that just means an anointed person, an anointed person by the Most High. That means somebody has to anoint you. Watch Acts 7 and 44 to 45. Go ahead. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. All right, we already be in the wilderness. That's the setting. Go ahead. As he had appointed, speaking unto Moses. He spoke to Moses in the wilderness. Go ahead. That he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Oh, we're talking about making the tabernacle in the wilderness. Go ahead. Which also our fathers that came after brought it with Jesus. Wait a minute. What your Bible says, sister and brother? Joshua. Your, your book say Joshua? Right here, Jesus. Verse 45, your book say Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. Mine say Joshua. Our Bible is reversed. Yeah. Your 4 and 8 say Joshua. Yeah, my 4 and 8 say Joshua. Mine say Jesus. This one says Jesus. Jesus and mine say Joshua. Is that not confusing? So we're going to be battling in doctrine now because you don't understand that Jesus is supposed to be. Joshua, Yeshua. Some people you hear is like, no, we know that. It's Yeshua, it's Yahushua. We know that. But what about the other three billion people in Catholicism and Christianity? They don't know that they know their Savior is supposed to be Yeshua, Yahushua, Jesus. Or is he? Go ahead, finish 45. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles. Whom El drained out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Wait a minute. Man. So now, your book, your was is trying to say now that Jesus was in the wilderness and he succeeded Moses. Right. Unto the days of David. But mine say Jesus. Yours say Joshua. Yours say Joshua. Bro, all right, mine say mine Joshua. Say which is right. It's Joshua. Yeah. But they, that's the same name. Now it's confusing. They try to make the same person. Why is it? Why? Why they flip flopping? Why your book say Jesus? Because it would almost imply that Jesus was there with Moses, and we know that wasn't the case. No, that's not. The we case. know that Moses gave Hosea as his real name, mm -hmm. his given name, which means salvation. He gave his. He gave him uh, Yah is salvation. Yahoshua. Maybe they tried to make this fit with Jesus saying that he was the rock that followed. The, the children of Israel and Moses. Now we add a lot to it. Now we now we add Corinthians into something. We in Acts though. You see what I'm saying? They trying to put Jesus everywhere because they're not telling people that it's supposed to be the same translated name in Hebrew. That's all I'm saying. We got a lot of confusion, but the Most High ain't no confusion. Man's bringing this confusion. It ain't my job. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just showing you what, what is in Scripture. Look at these. Now look at this typology with Jesus and Joshua. Okay. So Moses gave Joshua his name, Numbers 13, 16. Mm -hmm. And now Gabriel, we already read last week. Yeah, we already read last week about uh, uh, it, uh, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. right? Now here we got Gabriel told Mary her son was going to be named Yahweh Shah saves, Jesus, Jesus. But that's Joshua, right? What else we got? We don't have to name all of them. Let's see where else. Chosen upon them to begin his mission. Jesus our mission upon them to begin his mission after his baptism. Right. From the Jordan. Uh, Joshua also uh, prefigures the role of St. John. Wait a minute, now they're saying Joshua prefigures John the Baptist. Yeah. 
who caused cities to uh, re uh, recommit to air right. in the same river area of deliverance. Right. And it says Jesus himself judged baptism of repentance in the same area to model the role of conversion for all who follow Christ to freedom through the baptism of water. God El sanctified. Joshua has 12 men from 12 tribes uh, right. uh, from and the foundation borders. Stone, and then Jesus founded El Saving Kingdom among the 12 apostles, uh -huh. uh, which is Ephesians uh, 2, 19 to 22, whose names he permanently inscribed on the 12 foundation border stones of the New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem. Remember that, uh, number eight, uh, Joshua. You see, uh, the Lord, Lord exalt Joshua in the sight of all of Israel. And then the Father shall exalt Jesus above everyone. That's Philippians 2, 9 through 10. That ain't happy yet, though. It ain't happy yet. But Joshua was exalted. He was already exalted. But Jesus is supposed to be supposed exalted. To be. Just like every knee should bow, but it hasn't bowed. Yeah. But it will. Like, see, they just took all these characteristics that have things that actually happen. You remember the definition of typology? You take things that actually happen and say it's a foreshadow of things to come through Jesus. It's all through the scripture. They just, the Greeks just took and rewrote these books. But why would it need to happen twice? It needs to happen twice for them to solidify our belief in Jesus who came but didn't do what. He was he was, even what they foreshadowed him to do it still has not happened yet and while we wait for it to happen all these thousands of years, our heads being busted, we've been exterminated we got the lowest birth rate highest abortion rate, highest drug rate, highest diabetes rate highest heart attack rate we just lost people now watch this typology with Isaac Jonah we already know Joseph we already saw King David last week. Let's, let's take a look at it. So how are they making Jesus, tying Jesus to Isaac? Go ahead, Al. So Isaac carried the wood for his own sacrifice. Uh -huh. Jesus carried the wood of the cross. Y'all don't find that ironic? Isaac had to carry the stack of wood that he was supposed to be sacrificed on. Right. And Jesus, they, you got people still walking around yeah. Carrying wood crosses across the country. Yeah. Thinking that's so religious and so spiritual. You got the guys right here in downtown that be walking up and down the different streets with the cross. With the cross, right? All right, so through the blood, El cleansed the world of sin and began a new creation through the line of Noah. Uh -huh. Through baptism, El cleansed the individual soul of sin and that person becomes a new creation. All right, Jonah. Jonah appeared to rise from uh, from uh, the dead, and he emerged from the belly of the fish after three days. Uh -huh. Jesus rises from the dead and emerges from the tomb on the third day. Y'all know y'all going to hear that typology story so, on, Easter. on Easter. Every Easter you hear that story, right? How about Joseph? Joseph, son of uh, Joseph, the son of Jacob, received messages through dreams. Uh huh. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. Receive a message through it. Wait a minute. Jo Joseph, Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, son of Jacob. Yes. Joseph Foster, father of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now his seed ain't in Melchizedek. I mean, his seed ain't in his forefather, Abraham. Mm -hmm. he's a wow. All right. Read the King David one. So, King David was a shepherd born in Bethlehem. Jesus is the good shepherd born in Bethlehem. Y'all hear this every Christmas. Good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. the good father. But his story comes right from King David. Mm -hmm. It's not enough that he comes from the seed of David. Right. But now he has to have the same characteristics and story as David. Mm -hmm. He has to have the same characteristics as Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. He has to have the same characteristics and property as Moses. And he has to have the same characteristics and property as Noah. He is everything and all. And I'm telling you, the only people that write stories like this is colonizers. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20. Oh, look at I still see you. Uh, oh, okay. I don't think they know how to do that. Uh. 
and shown that in the tutorial. Ezekiel chapter 3, I think we're at the end, though, huh? Okay. Think we're at the end. Yeah. Think we're at the end. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I think we're at the end. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20. Go ahead. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness uh -huh. and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, uh -huh. he shall die. Uh -huh. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require in thine hand. See, a lot of y'all are saying, I keep the law, statute, commandments. I'm following righteousness, right? But you follow righteousness in Christianity, and you hold it on to a lot of. A lot of paganism and witchcraft, it makes you wicked unbeknownst to you. Because it's it's the programming is so deep, it's too hard for us to come out and understand that what Ra is saying might possibly be true. A lot of y'all is like, there is no way it can be true, because the only way to about true salvation is through Jesus. So all you really take from Christianity is the salvation through him. Everything else you know it was made up. Christmas was made up. Easter was made up. Sad in the chain. You know all of this stuff that through doctrine was wrong, but all you want to keep is the name everybody made up. Your Shia, your Husha, your Hoshua, your Hawasha. Y'all want to keep y'all name and that doctrine of salvation, and then you try to teach Old Testament. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm saying it's error. It's because the stumbling block, I'm not laying no stumbling block before you. Right? Read verse 21. Nevertheless, if I warn the righteous, if I warn you, and I'm showing you these errors and the, the deeper deception of the enemy, and you don't want to see it, it's not on me. Go ahead. That the righteous sin not, uh -huh. and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. I'm trying to deliver my soul by just warning us. It's, it's just deeper than us uh, leaving Christianity and leaving the, the modern day church and, and joining camps or, or trying to get a deeper understanding of the law, statute, and commandments. I got my apocryphal. It's, it's deeper. It goes deeper than that. They got a deeper hold on us than just that, sisters and brothers. It's a lot of woke people that still bound. It's a lot of dry bones that still sleep. Mm -hmm. See, look, I have not laid a stone and block of offense before you this day. For the epistle, why did the epistle say? I didn't lay a stone and block before you in this teaching. I'm actually trying to expose the deception. And part three, I'm going to give it to you plainly. That one verse, uh, this first and second series is just trying to lead you up. To, to, to the real realization of what has happened because you might not accept it if I give you part three in one. Mm -hmm. But hopefully now you'll be able to receive the message in part three because I haven't laid no stumbling block before you, right? We saw the doctrine of Jesus. If anybody preaches another Jesus, many will come and say, I am Christ. If you don't believe he died and raised from you, I mean, that Christianity is, is deep, right? They went across the world and proselytized the whole world with the message of Jesus. Get down and lay down with death. You know that, yet you still, in your religion and in your doctrine, hold fast to the teachings that came from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Now, read, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Read, sorry, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 22, watch it. First Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. Now, Jews, look at this. The Jews, we say we the Israelites, which means in this context, we would have been the Jews in Judea, right? So, but here go Paul, here you go Paul again talking to Corinth. He ain't talking to the Jews in Jerusalem. The Israelites say he's talking to the Jews in Corinth, but whether he's talking to the Jews in Corinth or he's talking to the, the uh, other nations in Corinth, he said the Jews require a sign, right? Go ahead. And the Greeks seek out the wisdom. Okay, so he, here go Paul, he out there in Corinth, and he say, hey, these Greeks, these Europeans, these other nations, they want wisdom. These 
Israelites, these Jews, they don't want anything but a sign, right? Because there's already prophecy of a Savior to come. Paul come and talking about Jesus, that, hey, amen, we want the Savior to come. That's what we're looking for, right? Verse 23, go ahead. But we preach Christ crucified. Paul, Barnabas, all these guys, they come out here talking about the crucifying the crucify of Christ. We went through all the prophets and they said when the Savior come, he joined in the two sticks together. He bring in the northern king, southern kingdom. He bring the people back in his land. He making the enemies his footstool, right? He ruling and reigning in Zion. You hear what Paul then talking about Christ crucified. He going out here talking about the Jews. See them Jews over there, Peter and James and all the elders. See, they all up there looking for a sign. The Greeks want wisdom, so I'm going to go out to all these other places teaching them about Christ crucified. Go ahead. Up to the Jews. And some so Paul saying, my teaching of Jesus crucified, his death, burial, resurrection, bringing the Holy Ghost, he said it's going to be a stumbling block to who? The Jews. But y'all Israelites say that that's y'all. But Paul saying, me teaching this little Jesus Christ, it's going to be a stumbling block to the Jews and up to the Greeks. Foolishness. It's gonna be foolishness to them because they like, what do we care about Jesus from Judea, born in Bethlehem, dying for his people? But y'all talking about what I'm teaching is stumbling block to you. But Paul was saying Jesus being crucified and taught back then was a stumbling block. Yeah. Why would it be a stumbling block? Because they wasn't looking for nobody to die for their sin. Absolutely. They still had the temple at this time. You can still go in the tone when Paul was preaching to Corinth. You can still go in the tone for your sins. Why would they need Jesus? I'm just asking you a question. You so worried about losing your, your, your free pass to salvation through Jesus that you don't even see already that even after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, they were still going back, atoning for sins in Jerusalem. Under occupation of the Romans, under the occupation of the Edomites. Yes. Paul said, I'm ordained to go away from Jerusalem to teach Christ crucified because the elders is on the run in hiding trying to teach. Mm. They wasn't out in the synagogues teaching Christ crucified. They went on the street corners with the megaphones. Christ crucified, he died for your sins. Come and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. They weren't, the, the elders weren't doing that in Jerusalem. And, and, and even Paul and Barnabas and all them was on the run. Yep. The Jews didn't want to hear no message about no Savior coming that wasn't saving. That's what the whole dialogue between Jesus and Pilate and, and, and Caiaphas was when he was supposed to have been crucified. It ain't making no sense. Are you the king of the Jews or are you not? Thou says, thou says what? These people want you dead, but for what? You ain't dead, man. You have no power. I'm not worried about you. Right. Well, if it was my kingdom, well, where is your kingdom? It still ain't came yet? It still ain't came yet. Still. And the Greeks, they call this teaching foolishness. Verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, uh -huh. Christ, the power of air and the wisdom of air. I'm saying the Gospels and these epistles, if you don't know who wrote them, we bought this story in this book, Hook, Line, and Sinker. I'm not talking about the Torah tonight. I'm not talking about what the Israelites followed. I'm talking about this new teaching that came along that supersedes, that overshadows, that overlooks Torah and Tanakh. And the prophecies of the prophets in the scripture, I'm saying none of them prophesied about a Messiah and a Savior coming twice. When Jesus even came in his own words, he said, there's going to be more Christ and more false prophets prophesying and saying they me that's going to deceive the very elect. At the time he taught it, only 12 people knew he existed. All of Jerusalem and Judea was not worshiping him. Even after his death, they were still following Torah and Tanakh. Mm -hmm. 
But through chronology, I'm going to show you who sanctioned the writing of the story of Jesus Christ and made their prophecy happen by backdating the story because the books was written hundreds of years after the life of Jesus, Peter, Paul, the 70, the 120. They wasn't alive. They wasn't alive, huh? They weren't. Jesus Christ being crucified for the sins of all men was, was and is the stumbling block to the true Jews. Mm -hmm. The Jews over there in Jerusalem, they don't even believe the story. They don't believe the New Testament. Jesus, if you believe the story, you have to believe the story that he died and was crucified for his own people. That story is distinct and specific to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The story of it being for the whole world was made up mm -hmm. by those who weren't included in the story. And if you stay tuned to next week, I'm going to show you in part three who are those people, why they would benefit by rewriting the story to include themselves, and how by doing so and having the power to do so, they have deceived the whole world, even the very elect. Even you that's still trying to hold on to their creation. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. I believe this is the last scripture. Go ahead. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The soul that sinned, you, you gonna die. Why? Go ahead. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. See, who gave us that story that parents is responsible for the children? You know what we're responsible for? Training up the children in the truth. Training them up in the ways of the most high, right? But in the end, the sins that these kids commit, they're going to have to answer for them. And the parents is going to have to answer for their sins. Go ahead. They, so the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Uh -huh. The righteousness of the righteous. The righteousness of the righteous, go ahead, shall be upon him. Uh -huh. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So whether you are wicked and whether you are righteous, that is going to determine whether you make it in the kingdom or not. Every sin. I don't understand why you are looking for a get out of jail free card as opposed to stop sinning and being righteous. That's the deception of Christianity and Jesus Christ. You are looking for absorption of the rules as opposed to being obedient and following the rules. That's why everybody has a spirituality but our difference in our divide comes in our religion and the doctrine. Because billions of people are going to be destroyed because they're looking for a free pass and they're looking for a different alternative than being obedient. I just confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins and that I don't have to answer for my sins because it's once saved, always saved. And I'll see him again in sweet by and by. Every week, sinners are going up, trying to look for exhaustion of sin. They're going to keep committing right. as opposed to just stopping. Being obedient, being committed to the things that the Most High told you you should do because the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him because the soul that sinned shall die. That's the bottom line. Here. So You're saved through obedience. Mm -hmm. Disobedience, you will die the ultimate death. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. The Savior that the children of Israel are looking for has a whole list of prophecy that he is to fulfill. And it has not happened yet. 
And it's no way that I want me and my family to keep believing that if we believe in this person who is the personification and the typology of people who already existed, if we just believe in him, we will be absolved from just the very fact of being obedient ourselves. Believing in Jesus don't make you obedient. But if you put all your onus in Jesus Christ, then you are deceived in everything that you believe. And I'm saying the biggest deception of the devil was to have religious people believe in doctrine that won't get them into the kingdom. That's right. That's the scary part. And with that, sisters and brothers, that's part two when Jesus Christ was born. Stay tuned for part three because we're going to bring out a lot of historical facts that you need to know in order to find yourself true salvation. So stay tuned to next week, next Shabbat. And Aaron willing, we'll see you then. Oh, last note. Don't forget that Jesus is also typologically tied to Mithra, and Tammuz, and Horus. This is the synchronization of all these religions brought together to create this one deity in a way that it can get not only the children of Israel to buy into it, but all the nations of the world to believe in this one deity. They solidify their plan of a one world rule in Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was implemented hundreds of years after the siege of Judea. Chronologically, they put this deity and on Domini in a time slot which they took rule over Judea. And the people through proselytization over time have bought the story hook, line, and sinker. Take it like you want to take it, but what did I ask you in the beginning? Listen to the information. If you ain't watched this whole lesson, Stop wasting your time. Pray and meditate on what you heard. That's the most high for understanding. That's if you're truly looking for true salvation. And with that, sisters and brothers, that is the end of part two. Let's stand and close out. Second Maccabees chapter one. We're going to start at verse 24. Oh El, oh El Elyon, creator of all beings who are fearful and strong and righteous and merciful and the only gracious king, the only giver of all things, the only just almighty and everlasting. Thou that deliverest Israel from all trouble and didst choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice of thy whole people Israel Preserve, and preserve thy own portion and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are the spies and the board. And let the heathen know that thou art El Elyon. Punish them that oppress us. And with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place. As Moses has spoken. Allah Allah. Sister and brothers, we thank you for joining us today on this Shabbat day. The Most High El, may He grant you peace and understanding until we see you again on next Shabbat. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, man.